A DNA microarray is a collection of microscopic DNA spots attached to a solid surface. Scientists use DNA microarrays to measure the expression levels of large numbers of genes simultaneously or to genotype multiple regions of a genome. Each DNA spot contains picomoles of a specific DNA sequence, known as probes. These can be a short section of a gene or other DNA element that are used to hybridize a cDNA or cRNA sample under high stringency conditions. Probe target hybridization is usually detected and quantified by detection of fluorophore, silver, or chemiluminescence labeled targets to determine relative abundance of nucleic acid sequences in the target. The basic microarray, since an array can contain tens of thousands of probes, a microarray experiment can accomplish many genetic tests in parallel. Therefore arrays have dramatically accelerated many types of investigation. In standard microarrays, the probes are synthesized and then attached via surface engineering to a solid surface by a covalent bond to a chemical matrix. The solid surface can be glass or a silicon chip, in which case they are colloquially known as an AFI chip when an AFI matrix chip is used. Other microarray platforms, such as Illumina, use microscopic beads, instead of the large solid support. Alternatively, microarrays can be constructed by the direct synthesis of oligonucleotide probes on solid surfaces. DNA arrays are different from other types of microarray only in that they either measure DNA or use DNA as part of his detection system. DNA microarrays can be used to measure changes in expression levels, to detect single nucleotide polymorphisms, or to genotype or targeted resequencing. Microarrays also differ in fabrication, workings, accuracy, efficiency, and cost. Additional factors for microarray experiments are the experimental design and the methods of analyzing the data. History Microarray technology evolved from southern blotting, where fragmented DNA is attached to a substrate and then probed with a known DNA sequence. The first reported use of this approach was the analysis of 378 arrayed lysed bacterial colonies each harboring a different sequence which were assayed in multiple replicas for expression of the genes in multiple normal and tumor tissue. This was expanded to an analysis of more than 4,000 human sequences with computer-driven scanning and image processing for quantitative analysis of the sequences in human colonic tumors and normal tissue and then to comparison of colonic tissues at different genetic risk. The use of a collection of distinct DNAs in arrays for expression profiling was also described in 1987, and the arrayed DNAs were used to identify genes whose expression is modulated by interferon. These early gene arrays were made by spotting seedners onto filter paper with a pin spotting device. The use of miniaturized microarrays for gene expression profiling was first reported in 1995, and a complete eukaryotic genome on a microarray was published in 1997. Principle The core principle behind microarrays is hybridization between two DNA strands the property of complementary nucleic acid sequences to specifically pair with each other by forming hydrogen bonds between complementary nucleotide base pairs. A high number of complementary base pairs in a nucleotide sequence means tighter non-covalent bonding between the two strands. After washing off non-specific bonding sequences, only strongly paired strands will remain hybridized. Fluorescently labeled target sequences that bind to a probe sequence generate a signal that depends on the hybridization conditions, and washing after hybridization. Total strength of the signal, from a spot, depends upon the amount of target sample binding to the probes present on that spot. Microarrays use relative quantitation in which the intensity of a feature is compared to the intensity of the same feature under a different condition and the identity of the feature is known by its position. Uses and Types Many types of arrays exist and the broadest distinction is whether they are spatially arranged on a surface or on coded beads. The traditional solid phase array is a collection of orderly microscopic spots, called features, each with thousands of identical and specific probes attached to a solid surface, such as glass, plastic or silicon biokip. Thousands of these features can be placed in known locations on a single DNA microarray. The alternative bead array is a collection of microscopic polystyrene beads, 
each with a specific probe and a ratio of two or more dyes, which do not interfere with the fluorescent dyes used on the target sequence. DNA microarrays can be used to detect DNA, or detect RNA that may or may not be translated into proteins. The process of measuring gene expression via cDNA is called expression analysis or expression profiling. Applications include, fabrication, microarrays can be manufactured in different ways, depending on the number of probes under examination, costs, customization requirements, and the type of scientific question being asked. Arrays may have as few as 10 probes or up to 2.1 million micrometer scale probes from commercial vendors. Spotted versus in situ synthesized arrays. Microarrays can be fabricated using a variety of technologies, including printing with fine pointed pins onto glass slides, photolithography using pre made masks, photolithography using dynamic micromira devices, inkjet printing, or electrochemistry on microelectrode arrays. In spotted microarrays, the probes are oligonucleotides, cDNA or small fragments of PCR products that correspond to mRNAs. The probes are synthesized prior to deposition on the array surface and are then spotted onto glass. A common approach utilizes an array of fine pins or needles controlled by a robotic arm that is dipped into wells containing DNA probes and then depositing each probe at designated locations on the array surface. The resulting grid of probes represents the nucleic acid profiles of the prepared probes and is ready to receive complementary cDNA or cRNA targets derived from experimental or clinical samples. This technique is used by research scientists around the world to produce in-house printed microarrays from their own labs. These arrays may be easily customized for each experiment, because researchers can choose the probes and printing locations on the arrays synthesize the probes in their own lab, and spot the arrays. They can then generate their own labeled samples for hybridization, hybridize the samples to the array, and finally scan the arrays with their own equipment. This provides a relatively low-cost microarray that may be customized for each study, and avoids the costs of purchasing often more expensive commercial arrays that may represent vast numbers of genes that are not of interest to the investigator. Publications exist which indicate in how spotted microarrays may not provide the same level of sensitivity compared to commercial oligonucleotide arrays, possibly owing to the small batch sizes and reduced printing efficiencies when compared to industrial manufacturers of oligoarrays. In oligonucleotide microarrays, the probes are short sequences designed to match parts of the sequence of known or predicted open reading frames. Although oligonucleotide probes are often used in spotted microarrays, the term oligonucleotide array most often refers to a specific technique of manufacturing. Oligonucleotide arrays are produced by printing short oligonucleotide sequences designed to represent a single gene or family of gene splice variants by synthesizing this sequence directly onto the array surface instead of depositing intact sequences. Sequences may be longer or shorter depending on the desired purpose. Longer probes are more specific to individual target genes, shorter probes may be spotted in higher density across the array and are cheaper to manufacture. One technique used to produce oligonucleotide arrays include photolithographic synthesis on a silica substrate where light and light-sensitive masking agents are used to build a sequence one nucleotide at a time across the entire array. Each applicable probe is selectively unmasked prior to bathing the array in a solution of a single nucleotide, then a masking reaction takes place and the next set of probes are unmasked in preparation for a different nucleotide exposure. After many repetitions, the sequences of every probe become fully constructed. More recently, maskless array synthesis from nimble gen systems has combined flexibility with large numbers of probes. Two-channel versus one-channel detection. Two-color microarrays or two-channel microarrays are typically hybridized with cDNA prepared from two samples to be compared and that are labeled with two different fluorophores. Fluorescent dyes commonly used for cDNA labeling include C3, which has a fluorescence emission wavelength of 570 nm, and C5 with a fluorescence emission wavelength of 670 nm. 
the two C-labeled cDNA samples are mixed and hybridized to a single microarray that is then scanned in a microarray scanner to visualize fluorescence of the two fluorophores after excitation with a laser beam of a defined wavelength. Relative intensities of each fluorophore may then be used in ratio-based analysis to identify upregulated and downregulated genes. Oligonucleotide microarrays often carry control probes designed to hybridize with RNA spikins. The degree of hybridization between the spikins and the control probes is used to normalize the hybridization measurements for the target probes. Although absolute levels of gene expression may be determined in the two-color array in rare instances, the relative differences in expression among different spots within a sample and between samples is the preferred method of data analysis for the two-color system. Examples of providers for such microarrays include Agilent with their dual-mode platform, Ependorf with their dual-chip platform for colorimetric silver kerned labeling, and Tlechum International with a rate. In single-channel microarrays or one-color microarrays, the arrays provide intensity data for each probe or probe set indicating a relative level of hybridization with the labeled target. However, they do not truly indicate abundance levels of a gene but rather relative abundance when compared to other samples or conditions when processed in the same experiment. Each RNA molecule encounters protocol and batch-specific bias during amplification, labeling, and hybridization phases of the experiment making comparisons between genes for the same microarray uninformative. The comparison of two conditions for the same gene requires two separate single-die hybridizations. Several popular single-channel systems are the Affymetrix gene chip, Illumina bead chip, Agilent single-channel arrays, the applied microarrays code link arrays, and the Ependorf dual chip and silver current. One strength of the single die system lies in the fact that an aberrant sample cannot affect the raw data derived from other samples, because each array chip is exposed to only one sample. Another benefit is that data are more easily compared to arrays from different experiments so long as batch effects have been accounted for. A drawback to the one color system is that, when compared to the two color system, twice as many microarrays are needed to compare samples within an experiment. Microarrays in bioinformatics. The advent of inexpensive microarray experiments created several specific bioinformatics challenges the multiple levels of replication in experimental design, the number of platforms and independent groups and data format, the treatment of the data, accuracy and precision, the sheer volume of data and the ability to share it. Experimental design, due to the biological complexity of gene expression, the considerations of experimental design that are discussed in the expression profiling article are of critical importance if statistically and biologically valid conclusions are to be drawn from the data. There are three main elements to consider when designing a microarray experiment. First, replication of the biological samples is essential for drawing conclusions from the experiment. Second, technical replicates help to ensure precision and allow for testing differences within treatment groups. The biological replicates include independent RNA extractions and technical replicates may be two aliquots of the same extraction. Third, spots of each cDNA clone or oligonucleotide are present as replicates on the microarray slide, to provide a measure of technical precision in each hybridization. It is critical that information about the sample preparation and handling is discussed in order to help identify the independent units in the experiment and to avoid inflated estimates of statistical significance. Standardization Microarray data is difficult to exchange due to the lack of standardization in platform fabrication, assay protocols, and analysis methods. This presents an interoperability problem in bioinformatics. Various grassroots open source projects are trying to ease the exchange and analysis of data produced with non proprietary chips. For example, the minimum information about a microarray experiment checklist helps define the level of detail that should exist and is being adopted by many journals as a requirement for the submission of papers incorporating microarray results. But MIAME does not describe the format for the information, so while many formats can support the MIAME requirements, as of 2007 no format permits verification of complete semantic compliance. 
The microarray quality control project is being conducted by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to develop standards and quality control metrics which will eventually allow the use of microarray data in drug discovery, clinical practice and regulatory decision making. The MGED Society has developed standards for the representation of gene expression experiment results and relevant annotations. Data Analysis Microarray datasets are commonly very large, and analytical precision is influenced by a number of variables. Statistical challenges include taking into account effects of background noise and appropriate normalization of the data. Normalization methods may be suited to specific platforms and, in the case of commercial platforms, the analysis may be proprietary. Algorithms that affect statistical analysis include, image analysis, gridding, spot recognition of the scanned image, removal or marking of poor quality and low intensity features, data processing, background subtraction, determination of spot intensities and intensity ratios, visualization of data, and log transformation of ratios, global or local normalization of intensity ratios, and segmentation into different copy number regions using step detection algorithms. Class discovery analysis this analytic approach, sometimes called unsupervised classification or knowledge discovery, tries to identify whether microarrays or genes cluster together in groups. Identifying naturally existing groups of objects which cluster together can enable the discovery of new groups that otherwise were not previously known to exist. During knowledge discovery analysis, various unsupervised classification techniques can be employed with DNA microarray data to identify novel clusters of arrays. This type of approach is not hypothesis-driven, but rather is based on iterative pattern recognition or statistical learning methods to find an optimal number of clusters in the data. Examples of unsupervised analyses include self-organizing maps, neural gas, k-means cluster analyses, hierarchical cluster analysis, and model-based cluster analysis. The input data used in class discovery analyses are commonly based on lists of genes having high informativeness based on low values of the coefficient of variation or high values of Shannon entropy, etc. The determination of the most likely or optimal number of clusters obtained from an unsupervised analysis is called cluster validity. Some commonly used metrics for cluster validity are the Silhouette Index, Davies Bolden Index, Dunn's Index, or Hubert's statistic. Class prediction analysis, this approach, called supervised classification, establishes the basis for developing a predictive model into which future unknown test objects can be input in order to predict the most likely class membership of the test objects. Supervised analysis for class prediction involves use of techniques such as linear regression, k-nearest neighbor, learning vector quantization, decision tree analysis, random forests, naive Bayes, logistic regression, kernel regression, artificial neural networks, support vector machines, mixture of experts, and supervised neural gas. In addition, various meta-heuristic methods are employed, such as genetic algorithms, covariance matrix self-adaptation, particle swarm optimization, and ant colony optimization. Input data for class prediction are usually based on filtered lists of genes which are predictive of class, determined using classical hypothesis tests, GNI diversity index, or information gain. Hypothesis-driven statistical analysis, identification of statistically significant changes in gene expression are commonly identified using the T-test, ANOVA, Bayesian method MANA Euro Whitney test methods tailored to microarray datasets which take into account multiple comparisons or cluster analysis. These methods assess statistical power based on the variation present in the data and the number of experimental replicates, and can help minimize type I and type II errors in the analyses. Dimensional reduction, analysts often reduce the number of dimensions prior to data analysis. This may involve linear approaches such as principal components analysis, or nonlinear manifold learning using kernel PCA, diffusion maps, Laplace and Eigen maps, local linear embedding, locally preserving projections, and summons mapping. Network-based methods, 
statistical methods that take the underlying structure of gene networks into account, representing either associative or causative interactions or dependencies among gene products. Weighted gene co-expression network analysis is widely used for identifying co-expression modules and intramodular hub genes. Modules may correspond to cell types or pathways. Highly connected intramodular hubs best represent their respective modules. Microarray data may require further processing aimed at reducing the dimensionality of the data to aid comprehension and more focused analysis. Other methods permit analysis of data consisting of a low number of biological or technical replicates. For example, the local pooled error test pools standard deviations of genes with similar expression levels in an effort to compensate for insufficient replication. Relation between probe and gene, the relation between a probe and the mRNA that it is expected to detect is not trivial. Some mRNAs may cross-hybridize probes in the array that are supposed to detect another mRNA. In addition, mRNAs may experience amplification bias that is sequence or molecule specific. Thirdly, probes that are designed to detect the mRNA of a particular gene may be relying on genomic EST information that is incorrectly associated with that gene. Data warehousing Microarray data was found to be more useful when compared to other similar data sets. The sheer volume of data, specialized formats, and curation efforts associated with the data sets require specialized databases to store the data. A number of open source data warehousing solutions, such as Intermine and Biomart, have been created for the specific purpose of integrating diverse biological data sets, and also support analysis. Alternative technologies, advances in massively parallel sequencing has led to the development of RNA-seq technology, that enables a whole transcriptome shotgun approach to characterize and quantify gene expression. Unlike microarrays, which need a reference genome and transcriptome to be available before the microarray itself can be designed, RNA-seq can be also be used for new model organisms whose genome has not been sequenced yet. Glossary an array or slide is a collection of features spatially arranged in a two-dimensional grid, arranged in columns and rows. Block or subarray, a group of spots, typically made in one print round. Several subarrays blocks form an array. Case control, an experimental design paradigm especially suited to the two-color array system, in which a condition chosen as control is compared to an altered condition. Channel, the fluorescence output recorded in the scanner for an individual fluorophore and can even be ultraviolet. Dye flip or dye swap or fluor reversal, reciprocal labeling of DNA targets with the two dyes to account for dye bias in experiments. Scanner, an instrument used to detect and quantify the intensity of fluorescence of spots on a microarray slide, by selectively exciting fluorophores with a laser and measuring the fluorescence with a filter photomultiplier system. Spot or feature, a small area on an array slide that contains picomoles of specific DNA samples. For other relevant terms see, glossary of gene expression terms, protocol, see also, sunine dyes, such as C3 and C5, are commonly used fluorophores with microarrays, gene chip analysis, significance analysis of microarrays, methylation specific oligonucleotide microarray, microfluidics or lab-on-chip, pathogenomics, phenotype microarray, systems biology, serial analysis of gene expression, RNA-seq, whole genome sequencing, references. External links, gene expression at DMOZ, microscale products and services for biochemistry and molecular biology at DMOZ, products and services for gene expression at DMOZ, Online services for gene expression analysis at DMOZ, PLOS Biology Primer, Microarray Analysis, Rundown of Microarray Technology, ArrayMining.net, a free web server for online microarray analysis, Microarray, How Does It Work? PNAS Commentary, Discovery of Principles of Nature from Mathematical Modeling of DNA Microarray Data.